In this video, what I'm going to look at is how to translate formulas in the language of predicate logic in, into English. And you can use this kind of information to translate the other way, from English into the language of formal logic. So the first thing that we need with respect to any translation is a translation key. And this translation key has three components. The first thing that it has is a domain of discourse. So we just need to make sure we have a model in place, the formal model, and we need to tie this into the sort of set of things that we're talking about. The next thing that we need is an interpretation of all predicate logic names into English names. That is, we need a way of translating, let's say, lowercase a, b, c, d into proper names or terms that pick out single objects in the English language. And then the final thing we need is an interpretation or a sort of translation method for translating n place predicates into English predicates. So in predicate logic, what we have are these uppercase letters R, P, Q, and we need a way to translate those R, P, and Q into English predicates like is happy, is tall, is greater than. So let's look at an example of a translation key. So we have the domain of discourse, the living human beings, or the things that we're talking about. And then we have a way of translating individual names from predicate logic into English. So we'll let A stand for the English name Annie or proper name Annie, it doesn't have to be English. Uh, the lowercase j from predicate logic to John and F to Frank. And then we have a way of translating n place predicate expressions into the desired language that we want to talk about, whether it's English or some other language. So TXY, where this two place predicate right here, we'll say that it stands for the expression is taller than, or an HX, this uppercase H followed by X is the English predicate is happy. So what we can do with the translation key is translate various English sentences into this language of predicate logic. So if we have a bunch of English sentences, we can take this translation key and turn English sentences into formal expressions in predicate logic. We can also do the reverse. We can take formulas in predicate logic and translate them into English sentences. If we let phi and psi stand for any predicate logic well-formed formulas, not phi or phi and psi, we can just translate these like we would for propositional logic. And I'll put a link in the video below as to how to do this in case you forget how to translate something like phi, right arrow, psi. So I won't elaborate here. Instead, what I want to focus on for this video is how we translate formulas that are unique to predicate logic. That is n place predicate terms followed by n names or quantified expressions right here. Let's look at an example involving n place predicate well-formed formulas. So we won't look at quantified expressions quite yet. Here we have our translation key over here, which specifies the domain and translates names from predicate logic into English names or just proper names in general. We have uh, the n place predicates in the language of predicate logic and its translation into natural language predicates. Translating n place predicate well-formed formulas is a pretty straightforward process. The only thing that really needs to occur is a sort of reversal of the order. So if we have HA right here, we know that A stands for Annie and H stands for is happy. So if we were to translate the expression right here in just a straightforward manner, we'd have something like is happy Annie. But this is not how people talk. This is not a kind of gr grammatical construction right here. Instead, what we'll need to do is flip the name and the predicate, we'll sort of swap their roles right here. This is because in the language of predicate logic, the predicate comes first and it's followed by any names or terms. Whereas, at least in English, it's a little bit more natural to start with the name and then ascribe various properties or predicate certain things about it. So 
H A gets translated as Annie is happy. Next, let's look at H J. We know that J stands for John, and H again stands for is happy, and so we can translate H J as John is happy. How about T A J? This is a little bit more complicated, but it isn't too terrible to deal with. Since we have this two place predicate term T, and T stands for is taller than, we have two blanks to sort of fill in subjects. We have blank is taller than blank. And so what we'll do is take A and say A is taller than B. So this first, oops, A is taller than J, excuse me. So this first item here is taller than the second item. And since we have a, our translation key, we can swap out or translate A for Annie and J for, what do we have here? We have John. And so what this gives us is the sort of natural expression that Annie is taller than John. So we translate T-A-J as Annie is taller than John. In the case of T-J-F, we can use a similar process. Here we have John is taller than F, and F stands for Frank, so John is taller than Frank. In this next example, instead of TJF, we have TFJ, and so the order of the names are simply reversed. Here we have Frank is taller than John. So this TFJ stands for Frank is taller than John. In this last expression, we have this not and, and this not and has TJF and TFJ. So we already know that TJF stands for John is taller than Frank, and TFJ is stand, stands for Frank is taller than John. So all we need to do is take these two expressions from four and five, which is John is taller than Frank and Frank is taller than John, and put it in this propositional logic construction or translation. So this not and gets translated as, uh, well, at least one way, it is not both the case that and then we kind of plug in our two expressions here. It's not both the case that John is taller than Frank and Frank is taller than John. So we would put this into English. Let's look at some quantified translation. We can understand the universal quantifier as standing for expressions um, in English that like for every x or every x or all x or each and every x or for each x and the existential quantifier as for some x, some x, there exists an x or at least one. So in other words, universal quantifier all and existential quantifier some. That is, whenever we see universal quantifier, we can kind of swap out this quantifier for all. And whenever we see the existential quantifier, we can let, um, we can swap that expression out and let it stand for sum. Let's look at some examples. So the first one we have EX or existential quantifier X, HX. We know that H stands for the property is happy and we said that we're going to let the EX stand for sum. But one way we might do this is to translate this particular expression into something sort of pseudo English. So what this existential X HX says is, there's at least one item in the domain of discourse or in the model that is in the interpretation of H. But since no one talks like this, we can sort of translate this into something a little bit more natural by saying at least one living human being, so items relative to this domain right here, is happy. 
that is we're translating this H as is happy and we're saying at least one item in the domain which is living human beings is happy. But still no one really kind of talks like this either. So the natural way to translate EXHX is someone is happy. Well, what about AXHX? That is the universally quantified XHX. Letting AX stands for every or all we can translate this as every X or all X's or any item in the domain is H. No one really talks like this again. So what is it essentially saying is that everyone, since we're talking about human beings or people, all of those things have the property of being happy. So we can translate AXHX, this universally quantified AXHX, as everyone or everything or everything in the domain has the property of being happy. This last expression I'll cover in some more detail in a later video, but I just want to kind of give you a heads up about it. What we have here is a formula where the quantifiers are overlapping. That is the universal quantifier has the existentially quantified expression within its scope. We can understand this expression AX, EY, TXY as stating for every X, so for any item in the domain of discourse, there is some Y, there is some item in the domain of discourse such that the X, that every X, is taller than that some Y. In other words, what this AX, EY, TXY is saying is that everyone is taller than someone. In other words, what it's saying is that every item in this collection of human beings, living human beings, if we go through the domain and we pick out any item that we want, we can always find some item, which is again in the domain, which is another living human being, where the first item is taller than the second item. That is where the first person is taller than the second one. In other words, what it's saying is everyone is taller than someone. Now this might sound strange because it's a weird thing to say because we would say, well, what about the shortest person? This sentence right here has to be false because the shortest person isn't taller than anyone. But the point here is not to translate only true expressions. Our goal is just to look at various predicate logic formulas and figure out the best way to translate them into English. And once we've done this, we have the tools required to do the other way around. That is, if given an expression, everyone is taller than someone, we could see how we might translate this back into the language of predicate logic. Now again, if this last translation wasn't immediately clear, I plan on looking at just how to translate formulas that have overlapping quantifiers in a later video.